has health, labor, and welfare ministry estimated that the number of people with dementia would likely continue to increase to over 7 million by 2025. Epidemic, epidemic dementia, Alzheimer's, number one cause of death in UK, second or third cause of death in the US, autism skyrocketing. Our society is breaking down. The power structure is helping to break it down, but they can only carry this out if we allow it, and we have allowed it so far. Those in power are not gods. They are men and women, psychotic men and women that crave power, that have put themselves in positions of power within secret societies that are indisputably in existence if one does any real research at all, and we have allowed it. We've allowed ourselves to be entertained with new cars and iPhones and McMansions and all sorts of other sensory distractions while we're being systematically poisoned, while our planet's life support systems are being torn apart and the biosphere and ecosystems on it are imploding day after day, this reality won't continue much longer. If we stand up to this insanity, all of us, together, we could yet alter the equation. Our challenges are not over, but we could alter the equation. Together, from the vaccination issue to the highly toxic climate engineering going on in our skies that's also raining down very toxic, neurologically damaging materials on us to our toxic food. All of this glues together. All of it makes the population less cognitively functional, less healthy, and thus a lot easier to control for those in power. This is an undeniable fact. And for those who won't face that dark of a reality, you will face it sooner or later, like it or not. Denial won't save you. March of 99, April of 99, uh, people were becoming very, very ill. At the time, I was working in a healthcare facility, and I was seeing uh, a lot of upper respiratory disease happen. Uh, and over the years, I've watched more and more people come down with asthma. And you can hear it. You go to a supermarket and find children, you know, children that are two and three years old, and, and, and you can hear them wheezing. You can hear rails in their chest. I mean, this is very unusual. I, I still don't, I still really do not know why this is happening. I mean, I've gone the, the spectrum. I've gone the spectrum from thinking, oh my God, they're trying to kill all of us, to uh, maybe they are trying to, you know, protect us from uh, cosmic radiation that may damage the planet, you know, ultraviolet, ultraviolet or X-ray radiation that's coming because the upper atmosphere has been uh, rented in some way, has been torn in such a way as to let those things through. So I've been on the way from, you know, the most evil intent to the most uh, beneficent. But in either, either case, I want to know. I wanted to know, I, I just want to know, I want someone in an official capacity to speak about it openly. Because whenever, whenever something happens, and, 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 and like I said, it's, 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 I've learned an awful lot about human beings through this process. Because I, I insist that this is happening, that this is real, and that it's not normal. That, this, that there's something happening, there's something under the table going on that's not being talked about, and yet it's happening in broad daylight, visibly. It's affecting everybody. It's uh, certainly, it, it's no longer the joy it used to be to go hiking in the mountains, to go outside to ride my bike. Um, I've had more upper respiratory and lower respiratory and sinus infections and, and health problems in the last five years than I have in all my life combined. And so that's part of my concern, and also a lot of the people that I care about um, have been very ill. It's about us. While the electronic story continues to unfold in amazing ways, the story is beginning all over again with a materials revolution in medicine. It's not a new idea. Remember this. Phase one calls for miniaturizing a submarine and injecting it into the carotid arm. Stand by. Fantastic voyage. It was the sci-fi smash of 1966. Phase one. Phase one. Scientists shrink a team of doctors and send them into a sick man's body on a mission to cure him. All stations, stand by. Tracking folks. Inject. Today, as our devices get smaller and smaller, Fantastic Voyage is beginning to look like prophecy. Microscopic medicine, the story of smaller is unfolding on a vastly accelerated time frame. In fact, scientists are on the verge of realizing a 21st century version of the fantastic voyage story. 
They're developing microscopically small robots that travel into the body's deepest reaches to diagnose... Climate engineering is nothing short of weather warfare. Due to the highly toxic materials, the climate engineers are spraying into our skies and skies all over the globe. Climate engineering must also be considered biological warfare. We're talking about materials like aluminum, barium, strontium. Who gave the government and others, other governments, the right to play God with Earth's weather and climate Shut systems? Off. Who gave them the right? Our apathy gives them the right when we sit on the bench and do nothing while this is going on above our heads. Same is true with the vaccination cataclysm that's occurring because no one wants to stand out from the herd and say, no, this is wrong, it's enough. We have enough data now to prove what's happening is causing immense harm. It's time for us all to stand up and make our voices heard. No longer see blue now, at least not in the same way that many of us know and remember. Your horizon has largely turned to white, and there is a very good reason that this is so. These fine, solid materials, or aerosols, are now in your way, and you will see clearly no more. The source and origin of these aerosols is now abundantly clear, and the aircraft operations have now made their mark upon this planet. It is a mark that you must now live with, and that you must now breathe, and that you must bear the consequences of. Contrails can and should form readily in clean, cold, and dry air. Normal clouds, on the other hand, require higher moisture levels and a particulate or aerosol base from which to develop. The radical transformation of our sky as a direct result of aircraft activity now forces us to address an entirely new set of conditions. Aircraft are now repeatedly dispersing materials into the upper atmosphere at flight altitude, roughly from 35,000 to 40,000 feet. These materials expand rather than evaporate and they usually transform into an unsightful haze that over the recent years has decreased our general visibility down to ground levels. One of the remarkable facts is that this commonly now occurs at very low levels of relative humidity, on the order of 30 to 40 percent, instead of the 70 percent or greater that is associated with cloud formation. And so we know now that these are not clouds in any conventional sense. They are indeed a unique and artificial creation that now crosses new thresholds in the atmospheric and geophysical sciences. There is one way that such a transformation can be made. So we have NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, admitting on the record that the atmosphere is now full of particulates and they don't know where they're coming from. So this is... This is quite astounding when you have the agency that's supposed to study this issue that's, that's literally um, unable to identify the source. When I spoke in front of the California Energy Commission in Sacramento, they acknowledged the state was losing 20 to 40 percent of its rainfall from, quote, particulates of unknown origin. But that investigation was never followed through. Uh, there's this investigation going right now with state water quality. I spoke to that representative. Their fishing game has acknowledged that there's aluminum running down the waterways. I spoke to the representative with uh, California State Water Quality who made it clear that they were not going to test the rainfall for this contamination, but isn't that where runoff comes from? So again, we have uh, an unwillingness to look at the obvious sources. This is a satellite image. It's a little foggy, but if you look closely in the, the bottom left quadrant, you can see aircraft trails, blanket spraying the Pacific. This is visible on satellite imagery every single day. These silvery white skies we see are particulates blowing in from the coastal regions, and we have patents request, or, or the, stating the dire need to enhance the marine layer, to try to deflect some of the sun's incoming thermal energy. It's called solar radiation management. So when we have satellite imagery of this happening, and planes flying in, in loops and grids, and we have this material blowing in on us. It's coming from somewhere. And carb, this is important. We know this metal's falling on us. We have